That's a real one, Jace. <laughs> Such a great way to catch brim. G'day guys, Bergie here, and welcome to this series on catching brim. I'm in the Tweed River, which is my home, hometown river. And we're gonna start off this series by showing you how to catch brim around bridge pylons. It's one of the best haunts for quality brim. A lot of small ones, but a lot of big fish will hang there as well. I'm gonna start off by throwing a cranky crab. I'm fishing today with Jason from our tackle store, and he's gonna throw around some grubs and see if we can scratch up some brim and hopefully you learn a thing or two about catching brim. Let's go fishing. So these crabs will actually sink, but their little claws have got a bit of foam on them. So the claws sort of sit up in the water and flap around a bit. Look awesome and brim, <laughs> love them. Now, when I'm fishing the pylons like this, I normally do up my leader a little bit. You want a little bit more abrasion resistance because of all the mussels and oysters and all the rest of it that's sitting there. Uh, I happen to have 16 pound on this rod, which is probably a little too heavy. I'd normally go 10, maybe 12, but I'm gonna go 16 purely because it's already on there. Uh, normally when fishing for brim, I don't know a litre, no more than six pound. But this one, uh, yeah, see how we go. And if they're real fiddly, they might not touch it, but we'll give it a go, see what happens. There's one feeding just on this corner, Jace. Good. You find the more the tide drops, the more they'll, they'll hit a bit harder, I reckon. Yeah. It's when them crabbies start falling off. Yeah. Little two inch grub. That's sort of clear factor, running with these jelly prawns on the river at the moment, so they do tend to get eaten quite quick in the right environment. A little bit of sauce, get the scent to help the cause. Great little presentation. Fish really well. Let's catch a fish. Today, Bergie's fishing a cranker crab and I'm fishing a little grub. So his retrieval rate on his crank is a different ball game to your little, little lures like these guys. Um, literally, we're pretty much all flicking them up against our pylon letting the lure come back with the tide and the drift. I'm pretty much all just taking up my slack like the cranker crab and feeling for those little nibs. That fish can be super touchy. Bergie's crank is just going off there right now. And occasionally, as it gets to the bottom, a couple little flicks with your rod, gentle, gentle, and just stay connected to that slack line. So his fish is coming up here. Well done. Nice little brim on the cranker. And as you can see, his retrieval is just a steady little take up the slack, take up the slack. So there's not, not much movement required with the cranker crabs. Grubs, you give them a little bit of a shimmer when they get to the bottom, wind up your slack. You feel them starting to pick. Don't be afraid to completely stop winding and let him eat it for a second before you draw up your pressure again. Nine times out of 10, he's got it in his mouth, set that hook, and hopefully if all goes well, you come up with a brim. Oh, there's one. Got him. So I literally just saw the tick on the line there and then just set the hooks. It's just a little guy. I should be able to lift him straight in. Come here, mate. There's that cranky crab right in the corner of his mouth. Such a great way to catch brim. So what the situation we have here is we have a run out tide and we have wind pushing against the tide. So the way we're gonna do this is we've come downside of the tide from the bridge. I'm gonna cast with the wind right up as hard as I can against that pylon. You can see all the little oysters along there. And what's gonna happen is the tide's gonna take this little cranky crab and it's gonna bring it down the wall and towards me. So it's really, really, really important that I keep winding up the slack and I don't have too much slack 
And with these cranky crabs, you've just got to look for that tick in your line. You'll see a fish, they'll come up, they'll bite it. You'll just see a tick in your line, but keeping that tension there, not too much slack line is the key. Let's give it a go, see if we can find one. <laughs> now the whole idea with these cranky crabs is it looks like a crab that's just basically fallen off the rock wall and he's sinking down. And that brim says, oh yeah, I'll smack you, mate. It literally is exceptionally important to get your cast up as close as you possibly can. You'll probably lose a few lures in the process, but you really want to get it up, you know, within an inch or so, literally of the wall. Uh, it's about a foot off, but that's not too bad. I'll come off the wall and eat that. Absolutely smashed it. Give me a little guy. Should be able to lift him in as well. Okay, one, two, three, up. Nothing wrong with that. If I'm in a brim comp, I'd be cheering. Oh, Jason's on too. Hey, a healthy little fella. Nice little brim, about 500 grams, and I'm just going to show you his teeth. Have a go at these little munches in there. I don't know if you can pick that up there. And that's why they love these pylons, because they get in against these pylons and they chew off all the weed. And they have a good crunch on all the crustaceans as well. And you can see the molars there at the back. So they scrape it off with the sharp ones and they crush it down with their molars. That's why they like crabs as well. All right, buddy. Thanks, mate. See you later. There is one other technique that I'm going to show you when casting on these walls that can be very effective. Now, when you have a look at this pile on here, it's got a little flat top. You can literally cast these up on top of the flat part, just like this. I actually land the cranky crab. Oh no, I missed it and got it right in next to the wall. But you can actually land it on top, wind it a little bit, and it'll actually drop off right into the bite zone. Now, if you can see that far, I'm just gonna slowly wind it off. It drops off right on the edge. Just let it sink down, Jace is on. Beautiful. Whoa, Jace, oh, you got a flathead. <laughs> Look at that beautiful blue tail in the water there, isn't he gorgeous? Yeah, it's a keeper too. Nice little brim bycatch on a grub, always welcome on board, especially when it's a quiet day. So beautiful little flatty, we'll let it go. Come and get it next year. There she goes. Sweet. Welcome back. This is Joe. Hey, Joe. It's Bergie. How you going, mate? Hey, good. Good, good. Uh, are you guys busy? No. Nah. No. Nah. Can I ask a favour? No. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, little cranky crabs, the smallest ones. How many have we got yeah. there? How many do we have? Yeah. Heaps or? Uh, I've got a few. Yeah. Um, is there any chance one of you guys could jump in the car and bring uh, three of the small ones down to us? Where are you? Uh, Chindra. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we're down, we're just before you get to Chindra Tavern, where that yeah. wharf is. Where the pontoon is. Pontoon, yeah, we can meet you at the pontoon if you guys yeah. could drop a couple of those off. We're doing a brim video and I reckon I'm going to lose me. I've only got one crank of crap. <laughs> okay. Yeah? Cool. Thanks, mate. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Thanks, bye. Bye. That's the joys of owning your own tackle store. It's like your own giant tackle box. Good day. That's right. What colours did you give me? Oh, Joe. Oh, yeah. No, they're good. They're all good. A couple of lights and heavy, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Make it work. Isn't it funny, there's like no crustaceans growing on this bridge. Yeah, I'm not liking the colour of this water. Yeah, me neither. Maybe the tide's not low enough, you just can't see it, but yeah, you're right. Little crankers. Just run a uni, uni knot, triple wrap uni. Oops, two. I'm 
best thing about the unis is you don't have to cinch them all the way down. You can leave tiniest little loop there for movement on these guys. Under load it will tore it up, but you can pull it back out again. Nice. Fresh in the water, maybe. Must have been clean or something. Yeah, maybe. Who knows? The tide has changed. I don't know that it's turned, though, is it? Yeah, it's not. Oh, we've come all the way down here. Yeah, it has. The lures aren't coming back to us. No, they're not. They're just sitting there in the tide. So this tide's really starting to slow down now. We've got this wind blowing this way. Tide's really slowed down. So just remember, when the tide slows down and it's not coming through as much, you don't have to correct and, and wind your slack up just as much. You're just going to let it do its thing. It's got a little bit of bow in the line. That's OK. But remember to watch it when it pulls tight. So a little less correcting and winding and just let that crab do its thing. That's a real one, Jace. <laughs> that could be a jack. Ah, it's a cracker. That's the one we're after. And Jason's got this guy on just like a, what is it, two inch grub? That's right. Yeah. That's a beautiful fish. That's quality, that one. He'd be nudging, what, 750 grams, I'd say, something like that. Lovely brim. And so much fun. Yeah, look at that. That's a quality fish, Jace. Well done. You can see that little uh, curl tail grub there. And you're fishing, what, uh, 1 12th ounce? That's right. And you're just flicking these up into those, hard into those pylons. Little twitch back. That's all. But a bing, but a boom. Retrieve and there we go. That's a Hang on for dear life. He's starting to get, they often call the bigger brim, they call them blue nose. And you can see he's starting to get that little bit of blue tone in his nose there but they get much, much bigger than this. In fact, in December, I'm heading down to Tassie. Come if you want. Chase them big girls. Now, now, my biggest one ever is 1.2, 1.3 kilos. I want a two kilo brim. Could you imagine a 50 centimeter, two kilo brim? Mate, that probably would have had it all over me then. Yeah, it would have been all over <laughs> real quick. Lovely fish, mate, well done. Beautiful. Well, that's catching brim on pylons under bridges. There's uh, so many other applications that are very similar to this, whether they be pylons or old jetties or whatever it might be. And of course, today we're using the cranker crabs. I hope you've learned a little bit. And I hope you catch some stonking brim. And remember, we're gonna do a whole series on this. We're gonna show you how to use little crankbaits, which are great on these as well. More soft plastics, vibes, and my absolute favorite on brim, and that is surface, uh, surfaceless little poppers. Absolutely fantastic fun chasing big brim on poppers. So until next time, thanks for watching. I hope you catch a massive brim.